Hi everyone, a blessed day to all. So in this presentation, I'll talk about assessment of thorax, breast, heart, and lungs. So let us begin with the assessment of thorax and lungs. So when we say um, thorax, um, this is part of the human anatomy wherein your thorax is located between the neck and the abdomen. Okay? So you have the thoracic cavity, you know, the superficial um, part is the breast and the skin. Okay? And yun nasa ibabaw ng yung thorax. And underneath is the um, your thoracic cavity that holds the lungs, the heart, and other blood vessels. Okay? So, just a brief review of your anatomy. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, ito yung thorax mo, um, located between your neck and the abdomen, okay, or the abdominal um, area. So, and you can see the heart and the lungs, your two lungs, okay. And then, each of this may mga parts then. Hindi na natin isa-isahin because you have discussed it already in your anatomy okay just a closer look of your lungs and your heart okay and the nerves around it so this is the posterior chest landmark and the underlying lungs so pag na ibig sabihin posterior pag nakatalikod ang inyong patient so this is the right upper lobe the left up, upper lobe okay the left lower lobe and the right lower lobe so pag nakatalikod si client makikita lang natin yung two lobes of the lungs but if the patient is on the lateral view of course you have to remember that the right lung has three lobes and so the lateral view for your left lung so kitang kita mo dito yung left upper lobe and the uh, left lower lobe okay so ito yung view na anterior chest lateral chest and posterior chest so meron lang tayong mga landmarks na uh, dapat tatandaan ninyo itong landmarks na to especially when you are doing the assessment okay ito yung right mid clavicular line okay nasa gitna yan right anterior axillary line the mid sternal line the left mid clavicular line and the anterior axillary fold okay so the same sa lateral chest meron ding mga landmarks and also on your posterior chest okay so just you just need to remember these landmarks especially when you are um, assessing the client na para alam mo kung saan mo ipoposition ang iyong kamay when you palpate or when you percuss okay so just another a uh, view okay for the landmarks and ayan marami lang talagang mga view para makita ninyo na kapag naka-enter your ayan naman kitang kita yung three lobes of the right lung two lobes of the left lung okay so that is the anterior projection the posterior projection the right lung lateral and the left lung lateral projection okay so you need also to remember the following um, part of the the thoracic cavity no yung kung nasaan ang manubrium of the um, upper room the 10 um, ribs okay yung angle of Louis the clavicle yan kung nasaan ang fifth intercostal space para especially when you um, locate for the apical pulse so this is very important na makikita nyo yung mga location na yan okay 
So in doing the assessment, okay, uh, for the assessment of the thorax, lungs, heart, and breast, of course, these are the general approach. You address the patient to the waist. Subuhubaran mo si patient hanggang waist. But of course, no, dapat merong, merong kasama si patient, may chaperon si patient. And of course, you must have good lighting. Why is it important to have a good lighting? Is of course, for you to see, di ba? Parang kitang-kita mo kung meron bang problem. For you to see the abnormalities. And the orderly fashion, when you are um, working the or doing the assessment, you have to follow the physical examination or assessment techniques. Ano ba yung mga techniques na yun? Meron na tayong tinuro nun. Comparison of one side to another. Sige nga, ano nga yung techniques na yun? That is your IPPA. Inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. And of course, you have to compare one side to the other. If you can remember during your physical exam one, diba, you have to check um, Kasi may two sides, like for example, yung sa eyes, you always have to compare the right eye to the left eye, diba? That's why when you check for the near vision or the far vision of the client, you have to check it both or you have to check it one by one so that you can, you can compare the result. Lahat ng merong two parts, you always need to compare one side to the other. And of course, you have to work from above, down. Unahin mo sa taas, pataas tayo pababa. Okay? That's why it is called head-to-toe assessment. And visualize the underlying tissue. Kung anong kaya, how will you visualize it? Examine the posterior thorax through sitting position. Kung kaya ni patient na mag-sitting position. Of course, ba bakit? Posterior thorax, napakahirap naman pag ipaprone mo ang inyong pasyente. So, mas better that uh, you ask the client to sit down para mas ma-assess mong mabuti ang, ang back of the client. Okay? And then, the focus of your assessment and documentation of the lungs and thorax, ito yun. Ito yung mga focus or ito yung mga techniques na gagamitin mo. Inspection. When you when you inspect, you have to position or check the position of the trachea. The thoracic configuration. Ano ba yung thoracic con configuration? Uh, patatayuin mo si patient. Okay? Lateral view. Tingnan mo yung anterior view lateral view and posterior view of the client. Um, is it 1 is to 2 yung configura configuration ni client? Okay. So, titignan mo yun. Dapat yung configuration ni client is 1 is to 2. Okay? Um, and symmetry. Is it symmetrical? Okay? Or nakatagilid ba yung ganyan? Or may ganyan siya? Ventilatory pattern, hirapan bang humiga? Imasal movement, may retraction ba pag humiga si client? Is there a presence of masses or lesions? That is upon inspection. Yan yung tinitingnan mo sa inspection. Palpation, you palpate the symmetry of vent ventilatory movements. Tactile fremitus, okay, pakakarangan yung tactile fremitus through a palpation. Tenderness and masses, may pain ba, may presence ba of masses or crepitus? Crepitus is a bubbling sound, parang pag um, hinahawakan mo yung kanyang mga tissues, okay? Percussion, you have to listen for the tones and ginagamit din tong percussion in percussing the diaphragmatic excursion. So, makikita nyo yan doon sa inyong checklist. And auscultation, so it is used um, to check the quality of breath sounds and the voice transmission. Okay, and inspection, especially for the thorax, of course, inspection, ginagamit mo yung sense of sight mo or sense of touch. You count the respiratory and its pattern. So how is it? Respiratory rate, ilan ang kanyang respiratory rate? May difficulty of breathing ba? Yung client. 
Assess the color for changes, the texture, and is there a presence of lesions. And yung ginagawa natin for inspection. So, in inspecting the anterior, the posterior, and lateral thorax, you have to note the following, the normal findings and the deviation. Of course, the color, ano ba yung color niya? Normally, it is pink. Dapat walang pallor or, or cyanosis. Because kapag may pallor or cyanosis, ibig sabihin, there is a decrease in oxygenation in that area. The intercostal spaces. Ano ba yung intercostal spaces? Ito yung gitna ng ribs. Diba? Ang galoflowy, pag ginawakan mo to, the clavicle, the first um, intercostal space. No, Ito yung space dyan. Even yan and relax. Okay? Walang bulging, walang retraction. Kasi usually kapag yung mga TB patient may retraction, makikita mo talaga itong um, ayan, pag gumihinga ano, gumaganyan, ito yung ribs in between ng ribs, so may retraction dyan, the chest symmetry okay, pantay ba or unequal, nakaganyan ba nakaganyan ba si patient okay, rib slope dapat yung rib slope, it is less than 90 degrees downward kapag <clears throat> horizontal or um, greater than or equal to 90 degrees, that could be a sign of abnormality na to the client. Okay, respiration pattern. Ano ba ang normal? It is even, 14 to 20. It is unlabored, so there is no difficulty of breathing. Okay, so the vision is an even shall labored. Hira puminga. Okay, less than 12 or more than 20 shallow deep breath. Pwede not okay anterior posterior to lateral diameter so ito yung tinitingnan mo yung anterior ito na yung configuration na sinasabi so you can see it also in your checklist so doon check for configuration so dapat kapag pinakita nyo sa akin it on the chest <coughs> configuration is 1 is to 2 ratio Kapag more than 1 is to 2 or less than 1 is to 2 ratio, that is again abnormal. Kapag more than, ibig sabihin may barrel chest. So, pag may barrel chest, ibig sabihin possible baka merong mass dyan sa loob or merong floral effusion. Yan. The shape and the position of the sternum. Yung sternum, pinakita ko na kanina doon sa anatomy, uh, uh, brief review of your anatomy. So, the sternum is in the midline. Yan dapat, no? It is level with the ribs. So, yung ribs maayos din, walang depression or projecting. The position of the trachea is in the midline. There is no uh, deviation to one side. The chest expansion. Okay, chest expansion. Paano yung chest expansion? Ito yung pinapakita ko doon sa demonstration where, wherein you place your hands, okay? Ilagay mo ito doon sa just below the bandang sifoid process and then you ask the client, no? Sa harap yan, pag anterior, pag sa likod naman, so doon din sa paang sa thoracic area, no? Kung nasaan ang lungs. So, ilalagay mo to and then you ask the client to inhale, exhale. So, magaganan yan. Okay? Magmove yan. So, that is chest expansion. So, dapat uh, 3 inches deep inspiration. Okay? Kapag konti, more or less than 3 inches, so, ibig sabihin, that could be um, sign of um, abnormality. Okay? And then, you inspect the shape and symmetry of the thorax from posterior and lateral views. Compare the anterior-posterior diameter to the transverse diameter. So, ito rin yung configuration. So, anterior to transverse diameter in ratio is 1 is to 2. So, it is symmetric. Okay? So, as I mentioned kanina, no barrel chest. Ano ba yung barrel chest? Papakita ko later. Sa barrel chest, increase ang kanyang anterior, posterior to transverse diameter. So, yung chest, it is asymmetric. Hindi siya pantay. Okay, so this is how, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, no, the cross-section of the posterior, that this is the transverse diameter and the anterior 
um, posterior diameter. Okay? So, this is an example of your normal um, adult chest. Nakita nyo yan. And the barrel chest. So, from the word barrel, so parang merong um, shape ng barrel dyan. Okay? So, another a view of the barrel chest. So, yan po yung barrel chest. Okay. So, uh, for uh, inspection of the posterior thorax, so again, ulit-ulit lang ito, yung configuration, uh, findings nyo sa configuration, um, 1 is to 2 or 5 is to 7 AP and lateral view. There is no deformities like kyphosis, scoliosis, or lordosis. I'll discuss each of these. Ano ba tong kyphosis, scoliosis, and lordosis? How does it look like? Okay, there is um, use of accessory muscle. So, dapat there is no use of accessory muscle. Um, there is, kasi kapag ginamit yung accessory muscle, there is an abnormal retraction of the interspaces during inspiration and expiration. Or may localized bulge like mass, tension, mass kapag may tension ng motorax. Localized retraction kapag may collapse or fibrosis. So, in inspection for the posterior um, thorax, you ask the client uh, to sit down. No? Yan. So, makikita mo niya, rin yan kapag may problem si client sa pag-breathe, ayan yung client positioning niya. Parang hirap siyang huminga, hindi siya makaupo ng maayos or cannot sit. Um, yung posture niya, hindi erect. Okay? So, chest deformities. Ito yung mga chest deformities na usual na nakikita natin. Pink yung chest, yun yung itsura. The funnel chest, yan yung shape, no? Kaya, ganyan naman ang itsura ng patient. Parang nakakuba. The barrel chest, okay? Posterior and anterior. So, nakita nyo, parang malaki siya. Okay? And then, ito another um, abnormalities yan ng spine, yung letter E. Um, an alin ang kamukha niya dito? This is actually okay, kyphosis. Okay, kapag kyphosis, ayan, yung nangyayari sa likod. Ayan, parang merong, kyphosis is another term of kuba. Ayan, nagiging kuba yung pasyente. Dito banda. Ayan, dyan banda ang kanyang kuba. For the lordosis, ang lumalaki sa lordosis, ayan, pag ganun, ang kanyang, ang shape, no? Ito yung parang buntis kasi na gumaganon. Lordosis usually nangyayari kapag may buntis. Um, scoliosis, ayan naman yung nangyayari sa spine. So, kung pansin ninyo, hindi symmetrical ang kanyang, ang kanyang position, ang positioning niya. So, it is, the chest is not symmetric, Okay? So, another view, alam ko may another view pa ito, yan. Ito yung another view for the scoliosis. So, we'll go back, uh, we'll discuss it later. So, inspect the spinal alignment for deformities. How will you do that? Have the client scan, patatayuin mo si client. Actually, meron din yan doon sa aking demonstration. And, you check from lateral position, yung sa gilid ni client. Okay, observe the three normal curvature. Titignan mo yung cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar. And then, to assess for lateral division of the spine or scoliosis, you have to observe the client standing from the rear. And then, you ask the client to bend forward at the waist and observe from behind. So, yun yung po si client, nasa likod ka, makikita mo yung itsura ng kanyang spine. So, normally, dito, spine is uh, vertically aligned. Pag dito, na, dito naman, ang chinichat mo naman, yung cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, um, spinal column is straight, right, and left shoulders and hips are at the same height. So, ito yung mga findings nyo, ha. Tingnan ninyo ang inyong mga checklist. Pag nag-aral kayo, kung ano yung mga nakalagay dyan sa checklist nyo, kasi doon sa aking demonstration, wala nang nag-discuss doon ng number one blah, 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 describe na blah, 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 diretso ako findings noon sa aking demonstration. So, you better check your checklist 
um, per item and then you get the normal findings per item. Para yun yung aaralin ninyo. And same with your physical assessment one, you will just give me the normal findings. Okay? So, yan yung mga normal findings natin. So, ito naman yung mga deviations. So, dapat walang yung spinal column, walang deviations to one side. Okay? Pag nag-bend over. Okay. So, screening for scoliosis. So, that is how it looks like. This is the normal. Okay? When you ask the client to bend forward, you can see that from the cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar spine, it is straight. Unlike this one in the in this uh, letter B, uh, when you ask, jan palang kita mo na yung S shape. And then when you ask the client to bend forward, this is how it looks like. So that is scoliosis. Yan. So an just another view for you to know uh, what is scoliosis. And this is the normal spine, and this is what happened to the kyphosis, like what I mentioned earlier, yung parang kuba. Dito nagaroon ng problem sa thoracic. Yeah. And then, normal spine, and then yung lordosis naman, ito, ito yung usual na nangyayari sa may malalaki ang chan or bunti. So, nagkakaroon ng lordosis kasi mabigat ang pressure dito. Okay? So, scoliosis, the uh, for you to differentiate the scoliosis, merong pa S, kiposis pa ganyan, scuba sa likuran, and then for the lordosis, ang affected is the lumbar. Okay? So, palpation of posterior thorax. So, you will palpate also the posterior thorax for the temperature, the skin integrity, the tenderness, and sensation. So, dapat uniform ang um, tawag dito. Uniform ang um, temperature. Walang masses. Walang pain. Ayan. The crepitus, you observe also on crepitus, there is no palpable sensation caused by the presence of small air or bubbles in the subcutaneous tissue. The surface characteristics, ano ba ang surface characteristics? Wala kang nakikitang masses, wala kang nakikitang um, presence of masses or any um, lesions, um, abrasions or any abnormalities. Okay? And then, the frametus. How will you check for the frametus? So, vibration, perceptible and palpation and produce pronation. So, decrease vibration as it moves along to the periphery of the airways. There is increased vibration on the major airways. Paano ba yun? Um, itong, itong, itong frametus, maririnig mo siya through a percussion. Okay, so magpi-percuss na tayo. So you can also uh, you can also see this of how to uh, check or assess for the frametus in my uh, demonstration later. So, so sorry, uh, it's not um, percussion, it's palpation. So you have to palpate kung naka-posterior, naka-posterior uh, sa dibdib. So makita mo rin 'yon. You ask the client to say 99, 99, 99, 99. So same din, naka-posterior or nakatalikod si client, 99, 99, 99, 99. So, ibig sabihin, yung vibration, vibration ng voice ng client, mas malakas doon sa major airways, doon sa bandang uh, bronchotracheal, bronchovesicular. Pag nasa vesicular na siya, nasa periphery area na siya, humihina na yung vibration. So, ganun lang yun. And again, the chest expansion, sorry, is 3 to 5 cm, not in chest, not in chest, yung sa previous slides. So, it is 3 to 5 cm. Okay. And then, so, sequence and palpation of the posterior thorax. So, tandaan nyo yung apat na, apat na areas. One, so, pag nagpalpate kayo, ito gagamitin mo. Of course, ito yung gagamitin nyo yung paalad nyo. Okay, one, sabay yan. Kaya nakita nyo, one, sabay. Laging sabay kasi dalawang sides. Dapat sabay yan for you to compare. So, one, nakita nyo yung itsura ng likod ng client. So, doon nyo itatapat yung inyong kamay. One, two, three, and then four. Yan yung vibration. You ask the client, una, palpate ka muna kasi pakikiramdaman mo yun kung meron bang 
Um, the, actually, actually, tatlong beses yan eh. Una, ganyan, pakiramdaman mo siya kung meron bang masses. Then, um, palpate ulit. Palpate ulit. Yun na yung 1, 2, 3, 4 na magsasabi si client na 99, 99. You are checking for the fremetus. Okay? Yung isa naman, of course, yun yung para naman sa mga temperature. Uh, sequence and palpation for of the anterior thorax. Okay, so di, kung kanina 4, ito 5. So, sabay-sabay, wala ka dyan. Kung ano yung nasa itsura, yun, kung nasaan yung number, so dyan yung itatapat yung inyong palm. Okay, yung doors, ano nyo, palm nyo. Okay? Palpate thorax for thoracic expansion by the following method. Place your hands on the posterior thorax at the level of 10th vertebrae. Actually, ginawa ko na rin ito doon sa demo. Gently press the skin between the thumbs and the client take a deep breath. So, hingang malalim po. Okay, yan yung thoracic expansion. Tinuro ko na yan kanina. Ba't parang pabalik-balik yung iba? So, inuulit lang yan para yung ibang findings kasi para mas maintindihan ninyo. Okay, anteriorly press the skin sa anterior naman ito together at the lower sternum and have the patient take a deep breath. Nang malalim po and then gaganon siya. Hingang malalim po, inhale, exhale. So, makikita mo yan. Symmetrical expansion dapat. Okay. So, ito lang din yun. No? Another, just another um, view or another exp explanation. Okay. So, pero, isa lang ibig sabihin yan. So, dapat magsiseparate siya ng 3 to 5 cm. Tapos, symmetrical dapat. Okay. Then, palpate the, uh, the posterior thorax. Of course, you again, you assess for the, um, okay, sorry for the interruption. Na palpate all chest areas for bulges. Kung may bulges ba, may tenderness or abnormal movement. So, avoid deep palpation. Huwag masyadong laliman for painful areas. Especially if there is a fractured rib, no? Or you are may suspect na may fracture rib. So, the finding here is that the, the skin is intact, uniform temperature, free of lesions, and the chest wall is intact. There is no tenderness and no masses. Yan yung ating normal finding. So, dapat walang lumps, bulges, the, um, depressions, uh, tenderness, or movable structure. Kasi pag movable yun, baka nga talagang may fracture ang rib. Okay, walang lesions, hindi rin ma mainit. Okay, and then palpate for vocal uh, or tactile premetus. Nahambat pa ulit-ulit. Yes, ito yung say 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, or pwede rin kasi ulnar. Ang gagamitin mo, 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, uh, dito pwede blue moon, 1, 2, 3, pero mas maganda yung 1999. Mas, gusto ko yun eh. Mas naririnig mo siya. Okay? And then, so, ayan lang yung dalawang head position. Pwedeng ulnar ay pwedeng palm. Okay. So, percuss. Percuss for posterior thorax. Paano gagamit ng percussion? So, ito, ididikit mo siya doon sa patient. So, meron din naman to doon. And then, you percuss. Yeah, for cats. Okay? So, resonance, sound elicited. Dapat, hyperresonance, kapag merong ay ha, impaisima or pneumothorax. Dullness, if there is presence of fluid and solid tissue or lobar pneumonia or there is two more. So, ibig sabihin, upon percussion, the normal tone or uh, the normal sound elicited should be resonance. Okay, so this is the intercostal landmarks for percussion of the thorax. Kapag naka-posterior ka, kung sa palpation sabay, ganyan, sa percussion, hindi. Kasi syempre, pang percuss mo tong isa. So, one, two, you have to follow the the numbers here. Okay, so practice nyo yan at, at home. You have to follow the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Pero kahit pag napansin nyo, hindi man siya sabay, so same area pa rin. ba diba? Limbawa, left. Dito sa 1, left. Tapos dito naman sa taas, right. Okay. Number 2, left and right. So, ganyan. So, you percast all areas. Okay. So, ito yung uh, bait slaughter pattern for percussion and auscultation. So, 1, 1, pa-zigzag siya, ha? Pa-zigzag siya. So, you start from here, one, dito, and then, baba ka lang agad, hindi ka mag-e-X, napupunta ka dito sa kabila. So, tandaan nyo yan, when you do the percussion, yan, ascultation, dahil hin sa ascultation, hindi rin pwedeng sabay. Unlike sa palpation, na, isasabay mo, one, two, three, di ba? You ask the client to say, 99, 99, 99, sabay. But, for the percussion and auscultation, isa-isahin mo yan. You start from here. So, you follow the arrow. So, dapat masundan nyo yan ha, when you do your assessment. When you perform your assessment. Okay? So, another sequence. Pag naka uh, anterior naman si client. So, you follow again. Again, hindi siya pa X. Hindi yung 1 tas X. Tas dito ko na naman tas X. So, 1 dito. Then, baba ka na agad. Then, ganyan. So, ganyan siya. Z. In technique of percussion, percussion, so ganyan po ang technique, okay, middle finger, then itatap mo lang din with your middle finger, okay, pwede isa lang yan, pwede dalawa, okay. okay. So, the steps in performing the diaphragmatic excursion, so you instruct the client, nandun din to sa ginawa uh, sa akin presentation instruct the client to take a deep breath and hold, inhale exhale ayan it starts per cast at the apex of the scapula, so nag inhale exhale sa client, so start ka na dun makikita mo rin yan dito start ka na, mag, pero one side lang to, start ka na mag per cast, pa down, okay then Till the uh, tone may changes na and marks the skin with marking pencil. So, makikita nyo rin doon sa akin. Ano na, nagmark mark ako. Then, instruct to breath several times. Exhale. Kasi, syempre, nagmark ka, no? Hinga po muna malalim. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, hold. Kung kanina, sa una, nag-start ka doon sa pinakataas, sa scapula, sa taas, ka nag-start sa scapula, nag-inhale ka, pinag-inhale mo si client, exhale, nag-tap ka, pababa, one side lang, kung nasa right ka, right tayo, kasi ang chine-check natin dito, kung nagkaroon ng changes, kung nasaan banda yung liver, so sa right, one, two, three, pababa ka, hanggang sa may changes na, so parang nagdadal na yung sound, so ibig sabihin, nandun ka na sa bandang liver na ni client, so mark ka na dyan, para makita mo yung size ng liver, so you ask naman the client to inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, hold, o kung kanina, sa una, inhale, exhale, hold, pag percuss ka, hindi hinga si client, percuss, 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 pagdating mo doon na may changes, inhale, exhale, maraming inhale, exhale si client, kasi inhale, Hold. Hindi na siya mag-e-exhale. Tapos, tap ka na ulit. Mag-percuss ka na ulit. Okay? And then, repeat the percussion from scapula apex and mark the point where the tone changes. Okay. So, ganito yan. Ito yung right, no? So, nakikita nyo level of diaphragm. Resonant dito sa taas is normal. Pag below na siya, nagkakaroon na ng dull kasi, dullness kasi meron ng ibang organ dyan. Okay, so I'm measure me yan. And then the normal um, measurement, okay, between, wala dito ang normal, between 7, wait lang ha, nasaan ang normal dito. Dapat hindi siya lalagpas ng 7 cm. Okay, per cast over the shoulder, so ito lang din yun. Diaphragm descends, ito, ito pala yung result. So, when, when you percast, dias, diaphragm descends 3 to, 7, 3 to 6 cm from T10 with full expiration held to 12, T12 with full inspiration held. So, kanina, nag-expiration kasi nabi ko sa inhale, exhale, stop, then tap, 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 nag-changes, um, inhale, exhale muna para hindi mapagod si patient. Inhale lang, then stop. 
and then percuss, percuss, percuss. Okay? So, kapag yung diaphragm nag-descends less than 3 cm, that could be a sign of merong atelectasis or lung collapse of the lower lobes or may emphysema or ascites or two more. Okay? So, ito yung mga part ng spine okay, the cervical hanggang C7 thoracic hanggang 12 para lang alam ninyo lalo na doon sa spinal and L1 to L5 sacral, sacral hanggang S6 and then the coccyx okay so let us now proceed to your auscultation so what's the purpose of auscultation that is to check the airflow through the tracheobronchial tree Deep of ventilation and presence of ventilation in all lobes. Presence of fluid, mucus, or other obstruction can be detected through auscultation. Condition of the surrounding lung tissue and pleural space. Medyo mahirap ito. Okay, again, use the systematic zigzag procedure used in percussion. Yung sinoshow kong pattern kanina. Ask the client to take slow, deep breaths through the mouth. Compare findings. Okay. Um, dito, dito sa ano, makikita mo sa auscultation, ang normal findings, pag vesicular, asan ba ang vesicular? Ito yung, ito yung lungs mo, no? Ito yung lungs. This is the tracheal, bronchovesicular, Get tracheal or bronchial, bronchovesicular, okay, and then the vesicular is the peripheral, yan. The vesic, ang sound na maririnig mo dito sa vesicular or the inhalation is um, greater than expiration sa vesicular. So, inhalation is greater than expiration. Pag nasa bronchovesicular ka, ang normal is that the inspiration and expiration is equal. So, saan ang bronchovesicular? It is between the scapula, below the clavicle, main bronchial. So, for the tracheal or bronchial, the expiration is greater than inspiration. So, dapat ito yung mga divisions, walang breath sounds like crackles, ronkai, wheezes, affliction rub, or absence of breath sounds associated with collapse and surgically remove lung lobes. Okay, so pinakita ko lang ulit ito, itong ladder na to, for you to use in escalating the client. This is for you to understand lang kung nasaan yung tracheal, yung tracheal sound kanina na sinasabi natin. Um expiration is greater than inspiration so dapat matatandaan nyo yan bronchovesicular sound and dito siya or pwedeng in between dyan so pwedeng dyan vesicular sound is the peripheral so ito yung nasa main bronchial diba? airway so dyan malakas ang vibration dapat pag sa frenitus but when we're talking about the um Ascultation, yun yung inspiration is greater than, blah, blah, blah. So, sa vesicular dito, ito yung lang periphery, di ba? Naka, kanina nakita natin sa previous slide, inspiration is greater than, kapag nasa vesicular ka, than expiration. So, yan yun. Okay, the anterior view, posterior view again, just for you to recall how to do the percussion and then the um, auscultation. So, nakita nyo yung arrow at yung bilog na yan. So, yung bilog na yan, dyan yung ilalagay ang inyong kamay for percussion or dyan yung ilalagay ang stethoscope for auscultation. Okay. So, the normal breath sounds again, sa vesicular, the inspiration is greater than expiration. And the pitch, um, actually, relatively low. Intensity is soft. And ang location is the peripheral lung field. For the bronchial bronchovesicular, inspiration is equal to expiration. So pitch of expiration is intermediate. Intermediate din yung intensity. So the posterior is between the scapula. Makikita mo. Pagka sa anterior, pag nakaharap ka around or upper sternum. Yan. 
bronchial expiration is greater than inspiration. The pitch is high, it is loud, of, and you can find it over the manubrium. Okay, over the manubrium, the bronchial or tracheal sounds. Okay, bronchial greater than or equal. Ha? Sa tracheal kasi is very loud. Okay, so actually, alas magkalapit lang sila or the same. Okay, so another, ano lang to, another um, explanation, but it's just the same in the previous slide. So, may mga additional lang dito na maganda rin ninyong, um, para mas maintindihan, for better understanding. Okay, so vesicular, okay, ito yung anterior, posterior, pag sinabi natin inspiration is greater than expiration kapag nasa vesicular tayo. Bronchovesicular, inspiration and expiration is equal. Okay. Let's proceed to the large stem bronchi or the um, normal findings that bronchovesicular breath sounds heard over main stem bronchi. Below clavicles and between the scapula where in the inspiratory phase is equal to expiratory phase. Okay. Bronchovesicular breath sounds heard over the lung periphery that is abnormal. Okay, lang periphery, di ba sinabi ko kanina, that is the vesicular, wherein may low, soft, breezy, or breath sounds are over the lang periphery, wherein expiration, I'm sorry, inspiration is longer than expiration. So, in the decreased breath sounds could be a sign of obstruction, or plural technique, or there is plural effusion, or pneumothorax. So, auscultate breath sounds for adventitious sounds. Okay, so dapat when you auscultate, so ano ulit ang location, you follow the location or the pattern kanina. The lung should be clear to auscultation and inspiration and expiration. So, on the vision, if there is presence of crackles, uh, where, where, which are, you usually um, auscultate during inspiration or there is an occur, Kapag, kapag nag-occur siya late in inspiration, that could be a sign of pneumonia and congestive heart failure. If it occurs early in inspiration, that could be a sign of bronchitis, asthma, and emphysema. Okay. So, there are different types of crackles. Fine crackles are popping, high pitch, and very brief. The coarse crackles are bubbling sounds, lower in pitch, and not quite so brief could be a sign of pneumonia, pulmonary edema, and fibrosis. Sibilant wheezes, it is a high-pitched musical sound that are heard on inspiration or expiration in acute asthma and chronic asthma patient. So we have also sonorous wheezes, these are the low-pitched moaning sounds heard mostly on inspiration in bronchitis or single obstruction or in snoring before sleep apnea. So, ito yung wheezing. Wheezing, ronkel. Ronkai. So, pag sinabi natin wheezing, parang musical or squeaking. It is high pitch and continuous sounds. It is ascultated during inspiration or expiration and it occurs in small air passages. The ronkai is like a sonorous or coarse, low pitch and continuous sounds. As cultated during inspiration or expiration, it occurs in large air passages. Coughing may, may be a clear, may clear the sound. Okay? Crackles. So, crackles. Again, meron tayong fine crackles. Again, this is just a summary or another explanation. Gusto ko kasi mas maraming, mar maraming reference. Bubbling, crackling, popping, low to high pitch discontinuous sounds as cultivated during inspiration. It occurs in small air sacs passages or alveoli bronchials. Bronchi and trachea. Friction rub. It is from the word rubbing. It is a rubbing or grating. Uh, loudest over lower lateral anterior surface as cultivated usually during inspiration and expiration. So this is an example of your abnormal breath sounds. 
dalawa ulit ang aking reference for you to understand it better. Adventitious breath sounds. Strider. Strido is a continuous, high-pitched, crowing sound heard predominantly on inspiration. The cause of the sound is generally the partial obstruction of the larynx or trachea. Strido may be heard in conditions such as fruit and foreign body obstruction. It's typically loudest over the anterior neck as air moves turbulently over a partially obstructed upper airway. Weeds. The sound of a weed is a high-pitched continuous musical sound. This is caused by air passing through an obstructed narrow airway. A classic weeds may be referred to as a sibilant weeds. This refers to the high-pitched whistle-like sound. Alternatively, what we often refer to as ronchi is the sonorous wheeze, which refers to a deep, low-pitched rumbling or coarse sound as air moves through tracheal bronchial passages in the presence of mucus or respiratory secretions. It is commonly heard in the lungs during expiration. It may be heard in asthma, emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. Crackles. Crackles are also known as alveolar rails. The sound crackles create a fine, short, high-pitched, intermittent crackle sounds. The cause of crackles can be from air passing through fluid, pus, or mucus. It is commonly heard in the basis of the lung lobes during inspiration. The crackles can be further categorized as coarse or fine. The coarse crackle sound quality is low-pitched and moist. It may be heard in pulmonary edema and bronchitis. Fine crackle sound quality is like hair rubbing near the ear and may be heard in congestive heart failure and pulmonary fibrosis. Pleural rub. The pleural rub sound results from the movement of inflamed pleural surfaces against one another during chest wall movement. The sound quality is considered a harsh grating or creaking. Potential causes include tuberculosis and pneumonia. It is best heard in the lower anterior lungs and lateral chest during both inspiration and expiration. To learn more, Subscribe and visit. So, and here is another one, another example. Nursing students have a saying, the struggle is real. Only another nursing student could even begin to understand how difficult nursing school can be. Hey, I'm a nurse with over 30 years of experience and I still remember how nursing school made me feel. Hey everyone, this is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com. In this video, I'm going to let you listen to six abnormal lung sounds, which will include wheezes, strider, crackles, and pore friction rub. This will be part of a review series of the lungs. Also, be sure to check out the video on normal lung sounds, as well as a lecture and skills demonstration, which is part of this series. So, let's get started.
Okay, thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can go to our channel to find more videos on nursing skills, NCLEX prep, and more. So please subscribe and share this video with others. So, I hope you you hear the sounds. Mas maingay pa ata yung aso namin kasi sounds. Okay. So, let us proceed. So, ascultate for altered voice sounds. Again, so, paano may ascultate ito using naman yung pattern pa rin in ascultation. And you can ask the client to say 99. Okay. Or you ask the client to say 1, 2, 3 or E. Okay, the normal findings, pag 99, the sounds muffled. Okay, same with the 1, 2, 3. For egoponi, <clears throat> the, sounds the sounds like muffled E. Ayan. So, that is your bronchopony, whispered, per whispered per pectoral loque, and egoponi. Okay, for bronchopony, the sounds loud and clear over consolidated from pneumonia or atelectasis or tumor. Ayan yung abnormal. For whispered pe pectoral loque, um, the sounds is loud and clear over the areas of consolidation. Egoponi, the sounds like I over the areas of consolidation or compression. Those are the division from normal. Okay? And then for infant, ito yung vibration, uh, variations natin. No? You have to note that the anterior, the anterior posterior diameter is usually equal to transverse diameter. So, usually one is to one sila. So, yung shape na nila is nearly circular. The shape of the chest. For, for client 5 to 6 years old, the anterior posterior diameter usually reaches that of the adult, which is 1 is to 2 or 5 is to 7 ratio or configuration. So, the respiration should be unlabored and quiet. So, respiratory rates in children, para lang you have the normal, uh, you have the idea of what is normal. Kasi baka sabi nyo, di ba dapat 18, 18 lang siya, bakit no born 30 to 60? Ang, ang bilis, ang bilis ng respiration. So that is normal for the newborns since their lung is not yet that developed. And then early childhood, 20 to 40 beats breaths per minute. Late childhood, usually 15 to 25. And the age 15 years and older is 14 to 20. These are the normal respiratory rate. Okay, another pediatric vibrations, eh, variations rather, in percussion. So, infant and young children normally a uh, hyper resonant sila throughout because of the thinness of the chest wall. So, masyado manipis pa. That, that's why hyper resonant sila. Yung sound that you can hear, or, or I'm sorry, the tone. Any decrease in resonance is equal to dullness in the adult. So, sa adult dullness na yon. For pediatric client, uh, variations and auscultation, you should be using the bell or small diaphragm. Should be used to uh, use to localize find findings, especially in infants and young children. So, ano yung bell of the stethoscope, di ba? Yung stethoscope mo, oh, sorry, wala akong stethoscope dito sa bahay. Okay, wait. Okay, so this is the bell of your stethoscope. Can you see it? Ito yung malaki. Okay, this is the diaphragm. And this is the bell of the stethoscope. Yung maliit. Okay? Lalo na kapag yung, yung, yung stethoscope is for adult. Okay, the breath sounds will be louder and harsher owing to close proximity to origin of sounds from thin chest wall. Wheezes and ronchi occur more frequently in infants and young children. So, for geriatrics, ito naman yung mga variations natin. Usually, there is an increase in normal respiratory rate. Usually, 16 to 25 ang kanila uh, normal na sa kanila yun. Okay, loss of elasticity. There is fewer functional capillaries and loss of lung resiliency. 
there is, there is also decrease to cough effectively. And then, meron silang kifosis. Usually, kapag matanda na, uh, nakukuba sila. Okay, dahil sa calcium na rin yan. Sternum and ribs uh, may be more prominent and decrease thoracic expansion and increase the diaphragmatic breathing. So, hindi na kayo masyadong maaalarma ng sobra kapag yan ang nakita nyo. For the geriatric clients, when we talk about the ger geriatric clients, those, these are the senior clients, mga oldies natin. Okay, hyperresonance of thorax, also like uh, the children, due to age-related um, emphysemic ch changes. So, hyperresonant na rin. Decrease breath sounds and increase retention of a um, mucus due to a uh, decreased pulmonary function. There is increase in anterior, posterior diameter up to 5 to 7 up to transverse diameter ratio due to loss of resiliency and loss of skeletal muscle strength. strength. So, resonance of percussive may increase. So, anterior thorax, again, ulit-ulit tayo, shape and configuration, you inspect for that, it should be a, okay, quiet, rhythmic, and effortless respirations, posterior uh, sternum should be in the midline, okay, slope of the ribs, symmetric, vibrating patterns, intercostal spaces, yan what else, and so on and so forth. So, binalik ko lang din ulit ito para alam nyo yung mga location. Okay, the funnel chest, the pigeon chest, and other examples lang yan. So, you have to observe for the use of accessory muscle. It should not be seen. Okay, or after a strenuous exercise or activity, they may use neck muscle for a short time to enhance breathing. Okay, so division kapag may use of sternomastoid or skalin and trapezius muscle. So you have to inspect for the costal angle and the angle of the rib. The costal angle is the normal is less than 90 degrees and the ribs inserted to the spine is approximately at 45 degrees angle. So sample nursing diagnosis for the lungs. So uh, in effective airway clearance could be related to shallow coughing and take So, in, in, ano to? Two part, three part. Impaired gas exchange related to chronic lung tissue. So, two part lang to. In effective airway clearance related to chronic allergy. These are just examples of mm, nursing diagnosis that you can formulate from um, the problem or from your assessment okay there is an effective breathing pattern or hyperventilation related to hypoxia and lack of knowledge of controlled breathing technique or they could, there could be impaired gas exchange related to smoking and or frequent exposure to air pollution or dangerous substances and damning nursing diagnosis that you can formulate you can formulate kapag um, may problem sa thorax or lungs. Ineffective airway clearance related to bronchospasm and increased pulmonary secretions for pediatric. So, impaired gas exchange related to poor nasal tone and decreased ability to remove secretions. Okay, we're done with your assessment of the thorax. Okay, the demonstration uh, is in a separate video. So, let us now proceed to the assessment of the breast and axillae. So, what is the purpose of your assessment? Is of course, to check the following, no? The lumps or lesions or swelling. Is there a change in size or is firmness, redness, warmth, or dimpling of the breast? Is there a presence of tenderness or pain? The timing in menstrual cycle, change in position of nipple and nipple discharge, age of menstruation, birth to child and age, and previous breast surgery. So, 
when you do your assessment you need to collect also the family the following the family history because that is very important for you to know if the family has history of breast cancer so that will serve as your um, baseline data okay and then self-care like the breast self-examination monthly so when is the best time to do um, breast self-examination so that is at, uh, during your first week of menstruation use of hormones gumagamit ba ng hormones ba uh, birth control or antidepressants is there exposure to radiation benzene or asbestos use of alcohol and caffeine diet and their and daily exercise routine last breast exam last mammogram so it's very important also to get all those data these factors for breast cancer increasing age pag tumatanda na personal history ano ba yung personal history ni client ano ba yung lifestyle ni client okay family history may history ba of breast cancer sobrang early nagkaroon and late menopause no natural child first child after 30 o oh, girls alam nyo na ha at risk kayo kapag um, marami na ang um, magiging problem kapag nanganak kayo at the age after 30 so medyo agaagahan nyo 29 pwede na so higher education and social economic status eh bakit risk factor yan ma'am higher education especially those who are um I'm studying um, after the master's degree, proceeding to the doctoral degree. Actually, it's very stressful because the process of going, of uh, getting that degree is really very stressful. Kaya hanggang MA na lang ako. <laughs> Joke lang. Kung kaya pa, so kakayanin. Okay? So, regular alcohol intake. So, palagi kumiinom ng alcohol. Um, uh, previous breast irradiation. Hormone replacement with progesterone, no or poor breast self-examination or poor screening. So those, those are risk factors. So this is the lateral view of the female breast. Okay, the four breast quadrants in the axilla tail of the spits. Kaya inahati na yan natin yan. Okay, upper outer quadrant, upper inner quadrant lower inner quadrant and the lower outer quadrant that is for you to know kapag meron ka mang nakapadyan na masses you know where is it located okay and then procedure or technique in assessment you have to use the inspection so you have to check the size the size of the breast and cb3 okay you have to check right and left should be a relatively equal with slightly variation so hindi dapat malaki yung isa maliit yung isa okay so may problem yan if there is recent change to an equal size or recent increase in size of one breast that could be uh, indicative of inflammation or abnormal growth you, sh you should also check for the size or shape okay it should be round and pendulous so there should be no retraction or dimpling which may be due to fibrosis or malignant tumor okay you can how will you check that for the symmetry and size you can ask the client to raise the hands or put the hands at the side and then ganyan so sa bewang put the hands on the waist so that you can check for the size and symmetry of the breast okay so symmetry contour and size of the breast okay so as you can see here maliit yung isa malaki yung isa there, there could be a sign of problem with that okay you should also check if there is presence of redness of the breast is there swelling so napansin nyo dito sa number 2 picture mas malaki is there pain or itchiness of the breast or is there thickening of the skin on the breast and rich or dimpled skin texture or pew the orange um, swelling of the lymph nodes in your armpit or above or below the collarbone okay, above or below the 
collarbone. Diba yun yung chinecheck nyo rin yung lymph nodes during your physical assessment one. Okay, this is skin dimpling. So, nakita nyo parang may dimple. Retracted signs. Okay? So, edema of skin or the orange sign. So, parang orange sign. There is nipple retraction and deviation. There is abnormal contour. So, that is that is a sign of problem. Baka may mask na dyan. Okay? So, inspection of the areola and nipples. Again, titingnan mo ulit yun. So, kanina habang nakaganyan si patient, nakataas ang kamay, nasa bewang, so, na-check mo na rin yun, not only the size of the breast, but as well as the size of the areola and nipples. It should be relatively the same with slight variation. And the color should be pink to dark brown. So, depende sa skin ng client. And the shape should be round or oval or it should the nipple should be everted. Okay, so dapat walang large variation, walang inflammation. There should be no inversion. Okay. So, ito yung another example of dimpling and discoloration. Okay. So, symmetry. So, napansin nyo parang kung walang line yan, parang it's just the same, no? Yung breast is symmetrical. But, you have to check the areola and the nipple. So, diba? They are not symmetrical in the picture. So, you also assess or you palpate also for the temperature. Okay? Should be uh, warm. There should be eret no eretima. Um, elasticity should be elastic and no tenderness okay could be slightly um tender kapag merong ano so ito yung technique of how to assess so marami ang technique but yung tinuro ko doon sa ano you have to start from the nipple okay you have to start from the nipple and then palabas ka okay okay wait as you, you have to start from the nipple Okay, meron pala dito. Oh, ito, ito. You have to start from the nipple, palabas ka, going to outer. So, 1 o'clock. Okay, nasa loob ka, no? Palabas ka. 1 o'clock. Um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Palabas. Ayan. Okay. So, masses. You palpate for masses. So, merong bilateral firm in from hamary, transverse ridge at the base of the breast. Masses or nodules, malignant tumors are most often found in the, in the upper outer quadrant. Usually, unilateral with irregular, poorly delineated border. It, should, it is hard, non-tender. It is fixed to underlying tissues or a fibroadenomas. So, benign ng masses kapag 1 to 5 cm siya, round or oval, mobile, firm, pwede rin solid siya, elastic, non-tender, single or multiple in one, or, in one or both breasts. So, fibrocystic disease is also known as benign. It consists of bilateral, uh, multiple, firm, regular, firm, rubbery, mobile, no jaws, with uh, with demark demarcated uh, borders. Nipple discharge. So, the nipple, there should be no nipple discharge unless um, pregnant yung patient or malapit na mga or nagpapadede, lactated, nag lactated mother siya. Okay? So, there should be no, fine, no discharge kapag after childbirth, Day, so, merong clear yellow discharge that could be the colostrum. Okay? Unilateral, serous or serous sanguinous or clear yellow dark red that is an abnormal already. Okay? For the lymph nodes in the following area, so, pag in mo, makikita mo rin yun sa breast 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, parang o'clock, 12 o'clock, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hanggang pa, palayo ka ng palayo, lalo na pag malaki yung breast ng client, papunta ka na doon sa arm ng client. Okay. So, there should be an um, not palpable nodules or kung meron man, should be less than 1 cm. So, abnormal na kapag palp may palpable lymph nodes. Okay. 
okay na more than 1 cm. So, our example nursing diagnosis here is an effective therapeutic regimen management related to knowledge deficit of breast self-examination. So, hindi siya nag-breast self-examination. So, the American Society 2005 suggests the following, that the woman um, age 20 years old or, or older, so kayo ito, should do monthly breast self-examination. And women age 20 to 39 um, should undergo breast clinical examination every three years. And every year for women age 41 and older. And there should be annual mammography for women age 40 years and older. Okay, we're done with the breast examination. Let us now proceed to the cardiovascular assessment. Okay, just a brief um, review of your anatomy of your cardiovascular. So, meron kang mga valves chan, the pulmonic valve, the mitral valve, the aortic valve, the tricuspid valve and so on and so forth and yung mga parts ng iyong ang cardiovascular your heart okay but our focus is, is the jugular vein the jugular vein is located in the neck and the drain and it drain blood from the head brain face and neck and convey it towards the heart you have to observe the jugular venous pressure Ayan, jugular venous pressure. Observe the person from the right side. So, right side po ha. Tandaan in your right side. Positioning ng client. The head of the bed should be at 30 to 45 degrees. Lightly to the left. Okay. So, nakatingin sa left. Provide tangential lightning. Dapat may ilaw to neck area. And measure the distance in CM. From the sternal angle to the top of the distended jugular vein. So, gaano kahapa. Pulsations visible at less than 3 cm. Eh, sorry, at greater than 3 cm is abnormal. Kapag may pulsation ka. Ano yung pulsation? Makikita nyo yan. May mga example tayo na may jugular vein na maganon-ganon siya dito. Kitang-kita yung vein. So, that is abnormal. So assess the assess the highest post, highest point of the tension of the jugular vein by ito yung sternal angle. Okay, titingnan mo yan kung gaano kahaba. Be measure mo yan kung gaano kalaki ang kanyang pulsation. Okay, so ganito ang pag-measure. Okay, the vertical level of the highest um, visible point of the tension, ito siya. Okay, ito yung vertical distance between the sternal angle and the highest level of jugular distension. So, that is the size. So, again, dapat hindi siya more than 3 cm. Okay, for the neck vessels, you have to observe the jugular venous pulse. Evaluate the jugular venous pressure. So, observe. So, dapat oh, agat maari walang pulsation yan. Okay, kung may position man yan, so, tingnan mo kung may ano ba meron dyan, may broad sums ba yan. Okay, the client is placed in a semi-fowler's position with the head supported on a pillow. Um, dapat, the normal findings, veins not visible, indicating that the right side of the heart is functioning normally. Okay, but uh, abnormal na kapag may veins visibly distended. Ascultate the carotid artery using the bell of your stethoscope. There should be no, no sound heard on auscultation. So you are checking here if there is presence of brewery sound in one of or both of the arteries. Brewery sound is swishing sounds. Okay. Palpate the carotid artery. Of course, dahan-dahan lang ha, kasi delikado din yan. Symmetric pulse volume. So, yung pulse volume niya, symmetrical, may full pulsations, thrusting quality, and elastic arterial wall. These are your normal findings when you palpate the carotid artery. And then, 
um, kapag may problem, may asymmetric volume, may decreased pulsations, or increase yung pulsations niya, there is thickening, hard, rigid, beaded, inelastic walls. Okay. Simultaneously, inspect and palpate the precordium. Okay. Inspect and palpate the aortic and pulmonic area. Observe them at an angle and to the side to note the presence of uh, or absence of the pulsation. So, tuturo ko mamaya kung nasaan yung aortic pulmonic area. May picture in din tayo. There should be no pulsations. Okay. No lips or hips. Abnormal na kapag may pulsations. Palpate the apical area. So, alam nyo na to saan ang apical area for pulsation. Noting its specific location, it may be displaced laterally or lower in the diameter. If displaced laterally, record the distance between the apex and the midclavicular line in centimeters. Inspect and palpate the epigastric area at the base of the sternum for abdominal aortic pulsations. So, pulsations visible in 50% of adults and palpable in most um, point of maximum impulse in the fifth lower intercostal uh, left intercostal space to midclavicular line. So, diameter of 1 to 2 cm. So, aortic pulsations. Yan. So, point of maximum impulse uh, displaced laterally or lower diameter over 2 cm is abnormal already or there is bounding abdominal pulsation. So, makikita mo dito sa ipag-district area na parang may pumipitik-pitik. Ito yung nakakatakot kasi sa probinsya, sa I amin mean, sa Bisaya, we call it kabuhi. So, hinihilot nila yan. So, which is hindi pala siya dapat kasi that is an abnormal. Ibig sabihin may malakas na pressure dyan. So, it could itong pressure, matas ang pressure sa yung blood vessels dyan. So, kapag matas ang pressure, tapos sinilot mo pa, it might cause rupture or aneurysm. Okay? Palpate for the presence of abnormal pulsations, lips or hips. Inspect and palpate the tricuspid area for pulsation in hips or lips. Okay? There should be no pulsations, no pulsations or lips or hips. Kapag meron, again, abnormal na yun. So, ito yung mga sinasabi ko sa iyo kung nasaan yung may area na yun. Ayan, the apet M. So, usually, ball of your, your hand, you will use the ball of your hand to locate the apet M. Apet M is, um, note any pulsation, aortic pulmonic, yan yung mga ano natin, tricuspid and mitral valve. Herbs point, yan, herbs point, aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid and mitral valve so describe the location the amplitude, the duration and direction of impulse perform palpation in three different positions so, pwede mong gawin na nakasupine forward sitting si client or naka left lateral decubitus si client the normal findings yung pulsatile movement yung sa uh, point of maximum impulse, okay lang yan Deviations from normal may vibrations or palpable trios or hips that is abnormal already or may more words na. So, this is the aortic area, abdominal aortic area. May another aortic area pa dito, ha, yung sa heart. Ito is the abdominal aortic area, ayan, ayan. So, papakita ko yung palpiting the pulmonic area, ayan yung pulmonic area, Okay? And then, the apical area. So, hindi na, hindi pa po wala na ipakita dito yung aortic area. So, the location of your aortic area, ito ka nasa second intercostal spatia of the right. So, ito yung right mo. So, nasa second siya. Ito yung aortic area kapag heart na. Then, kabila lang din sa left, pulmonic area yan. And then, baba ka lang ng konti, herbs na yon and then baba ka ng pang pif, tricuspid, and then mitral. Yan yung location. Try to visualize, visualize it kasi ang hirap din kapag hindi sa face-to-face -face para may students na pwede natin kung saan ilagay yung location. Okay? Ito mas better. So, aortic pulmonic valve. 
Ayan, to a gospel ball. So, as well, take the heart in all four anatomic sites, yung aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and apical. You have to identify for the S1 and S2 sounds, which is your love and dog. As well, taste for extra heart sound, which is wala dapat. Sa S1, usually heard at all sites, but you have to remember that S1 is loudest at the apex or mitral area. At the fifth intercostal space, midlabicular line. So, tricuspid area, left lateral border. Then, maririnig ang iyong S1. S2 is usually heard at all sides, but louder at the base. Louder at the base. So, loudest at the pulmonic area. Okay? So, nasaan ang base? Nasa taas. In children, yung S3 and young adults is normal. In S4 is normal then in many older adults. So, ito yun naman yung mga um, deviation yan. So, may problem kapag increase or decrease intensity. Ayan. In older adults, kapag may S3, that could be a sign of heart failure. And S4 may be a sign of hypertension. So, these are the abnormal heart sound. S3 or, or also known as your ventricular gallop and S4 or atrial gallop. Murmurs and pericardial friction. Those are abnormal heart sounds. Na dapat wala yan. So, doon sa checklist nyo, there should be no abnormal heart sounds like S3 and S4. Oh, I cannot open. So, this is an example of heart sounds and heart murmurs. Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find really good. In S2 is when the ventricles contract, called cyst. When a healthy heart beats, it makes a lub-dub sound. The first heart sound, lub, also known as S1, is caused by the closing of the AV valves after the atria have pumped blood into the ventricles. The second heart sound, dub, or S2, originates from the closing of the aortic and pulmonary valves right after the ventricles have ejected the blood. The time interval between S1 and S2 is when the ventricles contract, called systole. The interval between S2 and the next S1 is when the ventricles relax and are filled with blood, called diastole. Diastole is longer than systole, hence the lubda, lubda, lubda. Heart sounds are auscultated at four different sites on the chest wall, which correspond to the location of blood flow as it passes through the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral valves, respectively. This is how similar defects associated with different valves are differentiated. Heart murmurs or whooshing sounds produced by turbulent flow of blood. Murmurs are diagnosed based on the time they occur in the cardiac cycle, their changes in intensity over time, and the auscultation site where they are best heard. Examples of conditions associated with common systolic murmurs include Mitral valve regurgitation, when the mitral valve does not close properly and blood surges back to the left atrium during systole. The murmur starts at S1 when the AV valves close and maintains the same intensity for the entire duration of systole. This hollow systolic murmur is best heard at the mitral region the apex, with radiation to the left axilla. On the other side of the heart, a tricuspid valve regurgitation has similar timing and shape, but is loudest in the tricuspid area, and the sound radiates up along the left sternal border. Aortic valve stenosis. When the aortic valve does not open properly and blood is forced through a narrow opening, the blood flow starts small, rises to a maximum in mid-systole at the peak of ventricular contraction, then attenuates toward the end of systole. This results in a crescendo-decrescendo, or a diamond-shaped murmur, which starts a short moment after S1. It is often preceded by an ejection click caused by the opening of the stenotic valve. 
Aortic stenosis murmur is loudest in the aortic area and the sound radiates to the carotid arteries in the neck following the direction of blood flow. Again, on the other side of the heart, a pulmonic stenosis has the same characteristics but is best heard in the pulmonic area and does not radiate to the neck. Other conditions that cause audible systolic murmurs include ventricular septal defect and mitral valve prolapse. An example of diastolic murmurs is aortic valve regurgitation. This is when the aortic valve does not close properly, resulting in blood flowing back to the left ventricle during diastole, the filling phase. As the blood flows in the reverse direction, the murmur is best heard not in the aortic area but rather along the left sternal border. It peaks at the beginning of diastole when the pressure difference is highest, then rapidly decreases as the equilibrium is reached. Other common diastolic murmurs are associated with pulmonic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, and tricuspid stenosis. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to suggest a topic you want us to cover. So, let's proceed. We're finally done. So, yung mga demonstration in that and you can see it on our next video. Okay? A nurse will always um, give us hope an angel without the status quo. So that ends our um, presentation. And of course, some um, of the... Um, sorry, but I wasn't able to write down the, the reference. So this is the reference of that, of that presentation. So by Bates, Nursing Guide to Physical Examination and History. Okay, this is the reference. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching. God bless you all.